Today on our Let's Play series in Knights of Ages Global, we'll move on to the second easiest fortress to conquer, the Sea Death or Sea Sorrow Fortress. A quick shout out to those who joined us last week, T06121992, ON, Angus Crawford, Yusuf, Dragon Memento, and Soul0121. Triple T Gaming the Sea Death Fortress in the Northern Ireland is the next fortress that low-level players can easily conquer. It is located above Okinini Castle, way up in the Northern Ireland where the gods are located. Starting an attack requires paying 20 sandstones, 34 wood, and 14 raw iron. The starting point is at the lower right side of the map, with two paths toward the capture point at the top left. You can scatter your units three rows from the bottom and strategically place your support behind them. The two side towers are placed separately, one in the northeast and the other at the midwestern area. They both have 4732 HP while the capture point has 7024 hit points. The fortress is being guarded by 15 second job units, mainly scouts and archers. Alongside with these are 7 berserkers which are all around level 60. These type of units have weak armors, so any level 50 unit supported by a bard can easily kill them with no problem. As for the strategy, I suggest you hold one side with a strong infantry unit, a berserker or a shiftiness blade master, while you focus the other group on one side. The capture point is quite far given that there is a blocking wall in the middle so destroying a side tower for the first attack is advisable, especially if you are a new player with weak units. As for your support, equip an oivik loot to your bard so that you can have an extra step because the capture point is far from the starting point. Always keep your support behind your main units because the berserker can easily kill them if left out in the open. Flow is your bread and butter for any fortress run. It allows you multiple hits to the main tower. A will to slaughter unit for clearing mobs is also required, but not for this fortress, it's already an overkill. You can try the shift low strategy, shiftiness plus flow build if you have a proficient one-handed sword unit. This can make your unit closer to the towers on the first turn just by defending. It might take you 2-3 to three attacks before you can capture this fort, but if you have a strong two-handed sword and a bard level 5 eagle buff, then one attack is enough to finish this fort later in the game. Now let's speed up the game and fast forward. The estimated time of completion would be around 5 minutes if you are always coming from the starting point. This can be half in 2 minutes if you will break one side tower first. The rewards given are 4 superior rows, 36 oysters, and 7 pearls. These are much needed for all your banquet needs. This also translates into 18,600 silvers, which is 2,100 silvers more than the loot in Monarch. Converted into silver, which is 16,500 only. By far, this is the best place to farm the Northern Freeman reputation, as it gives 1,000 reps every completion. And that's all for this episode. Hope you learned something from this video. Please keep your comments coming and I will definitely add them for future episodes. Stay tuned for our next fort conquest, the Skabard in Perianor. See you online. Triple T Gaming.